This is part 18 of Angular CLI tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how routing works in an Angular application. This is continuation to part 17, so please watch part 17 before proceeding. As you have seen in our previous video, there are many small steps to remember to implement routing correctly in an Angular application. So let's quickly recap those steps. The first step is to set the base href element in our application host page which is usually this index.html page. The base href element tells the Angular router how to compose navigation URLs. Next, import the Angular router module into the application root module app module. This Angular router module provides us all the routing features that we need. Next, configure the application routes and then specify where you want the routed component view templates to be displayed using the router outlet directive. Finally, create a navigation menu and tie the configured routes with a menu using the router link directive. Along with this router link directive, we can also use the router link active directive to style the current route that is active so the end user knows the page he is on in the application. Now let's connect all these small steps and see how routing actually works. It all starts when we click on the navigation menu. Remember, we have built the home and employees links using the router link directive. The router link directive tells the Angular router where to navigate when the respective links are clicked. So for example, when we click on the home link, the Angular router includes slash home in the URL. When the URL changes, the Angular router looks for the corresponding route in the route configuration. In this case, the URL changed to slash home, so the router looks for the home route. We have the home route already configured. In the route configuration, we have specified to use the home component for the home route. So the Angular router knows it has to display the home component view template for this home route. But the question is, where should the home component view template be displayed? At this point, the Angular router looks for the router outlet directive. The home component view template is then displayed at the location where we have the router outlet directive. In our case, we place the router outlet directive in the root component app component because that is the top level component where we want all our routed component view templates to be displayed. Now you might be wondering, alright, for this home route, the home component view template is displayed within our root component where we have this router outlet directive. But then, how is this root component being displayed within this index.html page which is our application host page? Now if you look at this root component, notice it has got the selector app-route and this selector is used as a directive within index.html page as you can see right here. So within this location, the root component view template is displayed and within the root component view template, we have this routed component view template that is home component view template nested at the location where we have the router outlet directive. So this is how the home component is displayed. Now when we click on the employees link, steps 1 to 5 happen in the order specified and the home component view template is replaced with the employees component view template. Hope you are now able to connect all the dots and have a good understanding of all the small steps of implementing routing in an Angular application. Before we conclude this video, I want to make one point about this routes type that we have imported from the Angular router library. We are using this routes type within our route configuration right here. Now if we look at the definition of this routes type, it's actually an array of route objects. Now it's not mandatory we specify the type information right here for routing to work. Even if we remove this, routing is going to work exactly the same way as before. Let's actually prove this. Let's remove the type information, save our changes and then let's build and run our application. ng serve dash dash open. This is going to build and run our application. There we go. We are on the home route and I click on the employees link. We are on the employees route. Let's try to navigate to a route that does not exist. ABC does not exist. Notice in this case we see page not found. Let's try to navigate to the root of the site without any client side portion of the URL. In this case we should be redirected to the home route. There we go. 
look at the URL slash home. So routing is working exactly the same way as before. We just proved with or without this routes type, routing works exactly the same way. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is, what's the point in using this routes type? Well, it provides great compile time checking. Without this routes type information here, we'll not have that compile time checking. For example, if we remove this routes type from here, and then if we misspell any of the properties of the route object, we'll not be notified about those errors. For example, if we misspell the path property name, notice we are not notified about that error. But the moment we include the routes type within our route configuration, we are immediately notified about that error. So it's always good to have this routes type when configuring our routes. At the moment, all our routing code is in our root module, app module. However, for separation of concerns and maintainability, it's better to implement routing in a separate module and then import that routing module in our app module. In our next video, we'll discuss how to move routing into a separate routing module. Thank you for listening and have a great day.